Hello, and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today, we're going to take a look at my old Radio Shack DX440 shortwave receiver. So what ends up happening with these radios, it's a pretty common problem, is that the first receiver stage, the RF amplifier stage, uh, ends up going bad. There's a field effect transistor in there that's very sensitive to static, and what will sometimes happen is static buildup on an external antenna will short out the transistor basically. So what I'm going to do today is take this apart and try to replace that transistor. Before I do that, I'll hook it up to an antenna and I'll tune around and I'll show you guys kind of how it's working or actually how it's not working. We'll replace the transistor and then we'll test it again and it should come to life. So I've got the DX440 hooked up to my 80 and 40 meter fan dipole. I've tuned to a frequency here on 80 meters where I know that there is a strong station. I'm going to turn up the volume and let you guys kind of listen to it for a minute. You'll hear the station coming in and it'll actually sound fairly loud in the camera, but then I'll do a comparison to my ICOM and you'll see how strong that station really is coming in compared to how it is on the DX440. So that station actually sounded fairly strong in the receiver, but there was no received signal strength on the signal meter. And if I tune around the band, I'm really not going to hear much else. He's probably one of the strongest signals I'm hearing right now. So what I'll do now is switch over to my ICOM receiver so that you guys can see how strong he's coming in on that radio. CQ contest, CQ NJQP, looking for stations in New Jersey. This is K2PM, Kilo 2, Papa Bike, in Rapid River, Michigan, looking for any stations in New Jersey. So on the ICOM, that station was giving me a 20 over, as you can see in the signal meter there. If I tune around more on the DX440, I'm really not going to hear a whole lot else unless it's as strong as he is. So just as another example, I've tuned over to the AM broadcast band. In particular, I'm at WTIC 1080. This is the closest AM broadcast station to my location, and it should be booming in here, and you can hear that I, I can barely hear it. And if I tune around the broadcast band, I can pick a few stations up here and there, but I really should be getting all kinds of stations, especially at this time of night. So anyway, let's get the radio on the bench, replace that transistor, and then do the same test and see what it sounds like afterward. So what I'll do now is flip the radio over and take the screws out of the back. It looks like there are six of them. One, two, three along the top, one, two, and then a third one under here, so six. So all the screws are out, so I'll pull the back off now. And it looks like there's just one wire holding the back to the main circuit board, and that is the wire for the antenna over here. Now it looks like that wire is soldered on. There's no connector that I can remove, so I'm just going to have to leave this over to the side and be careful with it for now. So the transistor that needs to be replaced is this one right here, Q115. Now, the silk screen marking on here really isn't readable because it's underneath the part. You kind of have to tip it forward a little bit to see it. The only reason I know this is because I have another radio just like this that I replaced this transistor on in the past. So what I need to do now is take the board out. Now it looks like it's just held in with two screws down here near the bottom. So with the screws removed, the board is free to pivot up. I have to be careful of all these ribbon cables here. None of them have connectors on them, they're all just soldered directly in the board, so I'm going to have to work with it kind of the way that it is. So I'm not sure how visible this will be in the camera, and I can't zoom it in any further than it already is, but I've circled the three leads that I need to desolder for the transistor right here with kind of a red marker. So what I'll do now is fire up the soldering iron, get my solder sucker out, and get the solder off of those leads. So the solder sucker got a lot of the solder out, but I can't quite get it all. So now I'll use a little solder wick and see if we can get the rest of it off. Okay, I think it just about fell out of there. So it should be free. So here's the new transistor that I bought. 
This is a Radio Shack MPF 102 transistor. So it's currently September of 2020 and it's difficult, if not impossible, to find Radio Shacks anymore. So I will admit that I bought this part <laughs> intending to do this job about five years ago when my local Radio Shack was still open. Now, because Radio Shack is no longer open, it's going to be a little difficult to get a hold of an MPF-102. I did a little digging just before I edited this video, and I found that James Co. Electronics still has some on hand. You may be able to order from them. Now, I haven't done any research into whether or not there's a suitable cross-reference to an available part, but if you do a little Googling, you may be able to figure that out on your own. If you do find a cross-reference, please leave it in the comments so that we all can see what it is. Anyway, let's get this out of the package and put it in the board. Now, I will mention that these parts are static sensitive and I don't have a wrist strap or anything like that handy. So I'm just going to have to be real careful with this part and try not to damage it. Not sure if this is focused well enough to show up in the camera. Not sure I'm holding it steady enough either, but here's where the transistor was. And you can see the Q15 reference designator was under the part body. And you can also see the outline of the part, so I know which way to put it back in. So I did clean up the solder pads before I put the transistor in with the solder wick. But I'm going to put a little flux on here anyway just to help everything flow good. So now I'll trim the leads. Now I'll clean this up with a little isopropyl. Just to make sure there's no shorts here, I'm just going to get in here and inspect it with my magnifier. I think we're good to go. I'm going to put the radio back together and we'll try it out. So the guy that was calling CQ earlier for the New Jersey QSO party isn't on anymore, but there is some kind of a net here now. If I turn the volume up, you'll be able to hear all the stations, and you may also be able to notice we even have a signal meter now. Matt. I got you back to that, and thanks for helping out tonight, Mr. Steven. Let's see if line 10 is still out there. I don't know if I can hear Tennessee or not anymore. The short's gone. Uh, whiskey 4, Mike, the uniform fox shot. Whiskey 4, Mike, the uniform fox it is your turn, Mr. Jimmy. Oh, no, Dale, you are not proud to go to This is just before you left. And I'd like to call line number 28. Whiskey X-ray 5, you know, WX5K. Okay, so as you heard, there were a couple of stations there on that net. And plenty of background noise, actually, too. So this thing is working great now. So what I'll do now is switch over to the AM broadcast band like I did before. See if we can hear stations over there. Okay, there's WBZ out of Boston, Massachusetts, which is about 75 miles or so to my northeast. And you can see that's full scale, and we're hearing a nice strong signal now. Whereas before, I didn't hear a thing. They're also affecting the northbound side right this minute, not too heavily, but in that area throughout the overnight, we'll see it. Downtown, otherwise, we're doing pretty well. Down to the south, we're in okay shape. Up and if I tune up the band, you can see that there's stations all over the place like there should be. Or download the free app from your smartphone and start watching right now. Ready to create your own income with your own home-based business where there's no such thing as getting laid off? Uh-oh, don't look now. Here's the inspector. What do you think, Maple? Did I do a good job fixing it? That's pretty much going to wrap things up for repairing the RF amplifier on my old Radio Shack DX440 shortwave receiver. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. If you want to support my channel in another way, you can check out my new t-shirt that's available by clicking the link down in the video description. Or you can check out my Amazon store too. Thanks for watching.